Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we are going to be installing one of my favorite services for the Raspberry Pi, which is Nix Cloud onto our Pi hosted series. So let's get started. Now, if you guys are new to this channel, I'm going to leave a link on the top left or a card on the top left and a link down in the description below of the playlist on the Pi Hosted series just to get you guys all caught up. We will be using the Pi Hosted app template for Portana on the series. So yeah, if you haven't switched over yet, uh, I'll leave a link down in the description below to the GitHub. Now, today we are going to be installing Next Cloud. Now, in a nutshell, Nextcloud is basically a file hosting service that you could reach on a web browser and upload files, download files. It could be pictures, documents, video files, anything you want into what you would call the cloud, which is basically someone else's computer. Now, Nextcloud could get definitely a lot more complicated than that. And to be honest, I could almost make a mini series on Nextcloud on how much you can do to it, especially like changing the login to two factor or even logging in with AD or changing it so you could edit the uh, office documents or turning into like a Zoom meeting because you could install a little apps that allow you to do video conferencing. It's there's just so much you could do with Nextcloud. And if you haven't tried it already, I urge you to give it a try. Now I started with Nextcloud a couple of years ago with just a simple, since it has apps for your Android or iPhone, I was like, all right, let's give this a try in backing up my phone. Then it just expanded from there with me adding this and having my wife join so she could back up her phone, tons of stuff back and forth. And yeah, by doing this, you can eventually even share it outside of your network and have your family use it or friends use it and they could all join in together using your cloud. Again, like I said, this could be a whole mini series just on Nextcloud itself, but we're not gonna be doing that. We're, we're only gonna be installing it so you guys could at least try to play around with it and see what you would do with it. Now, the version we're gonna be installing is called Nextcloud Pi, which is specifically made for ARM devices like ours, the Raspberry Pi, Odroid, or basically anything that's ARM related. And it's created by a creator called Own Your Bits. I'm gonna leave a link to his website, also his GitHub. So if you don't wanna install it through Portainer, you could install it through Docker Compose or even use this script to install it directly onto your OS. So there's many different ways to install this version of Nextcloud. And his version basically simplifies the configuration process. It comes with a web management interface where you could configure basically everything that you would in the config.xml on Nextcloud. Instead of having to SSH into it, you now have a web interface. Anyway, let's jump into it. Now here we, on the left, we have our portainer, so you're familiar with that. And on the right is his website, Own Your Bits. So he's basically got a website describing you what supported system it works with, how to install it on virtual machines or Docker and tons of other stuff. So like I said, if you're not interested in doing this on portainer, you could do it on another environment. That is perfectly fine. All right, so for us, I actually added into our app template already. So the ease of installing is just one click. I'm gonna head over to our container head over to app templates. And I want, again, I keep wanting to thank you guys because we are expanding this list so much. I think we added another five or six applications to the bottom, like uh, Speed Tracker, Uptime Kuma, tons of stuff. I've added a few more other templates in here as well. And this list is getting bigger and better. And a lot of it is getting fixed up. The stuff that I, you know, overseen or some, some stuff that I missed, we are slowly fixing all the issues with it so we could actually get it installed into our ARM devices. So moving down a little, uh, let's see, where did I put this? Because I didn't put it on the bottom. Oh, right here, Next Cloud. So you see Next Cloud Pi? That's where I'm going. I actually got to change that, fix that icon. The icon's wrong, but I will be working on that. And this will basically create everything you need to deploy the next Cloud Pi. Now, after deploying, we still need to do a little bit of configurations. So I'm going to show you how to do that. For now, I'm going to deploy the container. It's going to take about maybe five minutes or 10, depending on your internet connection, because I think it downloads upwards of about 800 megabytes worth of stuff, or maybe 900 megabytes and then extracts it. So it does take a little bit of time to deploy this. So just sit back, drink your coffee and let this go. All right, now that everything is loaded and the Docker container app template is finished, uh, the first thing you want to do is hit up 8443. Uh, now, if you click through here, it's not going to allow it because it doesn't run through HTTPS. So you're just going to have to do HTTPS in the front and it will open this menu. This is the first time you're going to be in your configuration. So you're going to have to save these passwords. So I'm just going to open up a text editor 
And you could always um, change these later on. But first, you do need to grab these so you can log into everything you need. So I'm just going to paste this here, grab this one, and then paste down there. So the top one is the admin user and to, for the configuration utility. And then the bottom is the next cloud user for the actual application. So uh, first, we're going to have to activate. And this will actually turn everything on, get everything working and make sure you have these two passwords. Again, you could change them right away once you log in, but you do need these. If you lose these, you might have to rebuild the container again because there's really no way to get the same passwords back. Okay, here we go. It changed my website over to the app, which is 4443. That's your configuration utility. So I'm gonna head into there. It's gonna ask me to add my username, so it's NCP. And it's the first one that we saved, not the bottom one. We're going to copy that, paste that in there. I'm not going to save it. And here we go. This is our first run. So I'm going to run it. Uh, welcome, hit that, external access. If you hit yes, it'll actually give you configurations to what you need to port forward. So it doesn't really help much. Um, and honestly, in the future, we're going to be doing another episode on proxy managers and stuff. So we will be eventually hosting our services into the public for our friends and family and stuff. So. Uh, we're going to hit no for this because our directions is going to change for external access. And now we are going to go to the web panel. So before you get anything working, if I was to jump over to say um, 8443 again, HTTPS, it would actually won't allow me to log in. It'll say access through untrusted domain. It won't allow you to access it. So what we need to do that there is fix this problem first. Well, as you notice, this is the actual Nextcloud Pi configuration utility. This is their web portal where you can configure everything you need to on your Nextcloud. So if you have the time, go through all these options, take a look at what's going on with it if you want to get yourself more familiar with it. Like if you wanted to have HTTPS encryption and use Let's Encrypt, you could actually enable it through these options here. So there's more about it. I'm not going to get into it. Like I said, this could be its own mini series on how many things you can do. But first, we are going to do trusted, oh, wrong one, right here, trusted domains. And what we're going to apply here is, at, to be honest, it's our IP on the Raspberry Pi server, not the network IP. Uh, because the way how containers work is that we are connected to the Raspberry Pi server, and then the Raspberry Pi con uh, server is connected to the containers itself, and they have different IPs. So what we need to set up here is... RPI SRV. Now I changed my IP to a host name just because it's a lot easier now instead of having my IPs change around every time I reboot the system or instead of having to figure out or remember what my IP is, I converted this to my host name. Um, you could do this through your router. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's a way to do it everywhere else. Your router might be set up differently the way mine is. You could. This is where you would put your IP address of your Raspberry Pi. For me, like I said, it's my Raspberry Pi server. Now, just to, in case, if that doesn't work, I'm going to do 168, 192, uh, 192.168.105.92. That is the actual IP of the Raspberry Pi server. You could put up to three. So those are the two I'm going to put, apply. And once that is done, I can head over to Nextcloud, do a Control-Shift-R, and there we have it. Now I'm able to connect to it. That message went away, and I could use my regular user, which is NCP and the other password that we have saved right down here. Log in, don't save, and voila. Now we have our dashboard to our next cloud. If you're not familiar with it, you could definitely go through these menus. I'll kind of explain what everything is on next cloud, how to use it, where to download the apps for your phone, stuff like that. It's a lot of stuff that you could do, and you could just go through that menu and look for it. I'm just gonna quickly go through this. This video is more about installing the Nextcloud, not about Nextcloud itself. But if I head over to files, uh, this is where I could actually just drag and drop files into this area. Um, right now it's still, I think, preloading a lot of this stuff. So the first time you're running this, it is a little sluggish, but after you're running it for a little while, it actually is pretty quick. So if I want to transfer something like, let's see, videos. No, nope, I don't have anything here. Maybe downloads. Uh, and I wanted to down, transfer say ISO image I could drag and drop 
and that's it. It'll just tell me how long it takes to copy the stuff over. And that's how you transfer files. Now, one of the things that I was talking about earlier was the apps. So if you head over to your top right, the little icon for your name, head over to apps. I'm gonna leave this page because I don't wanna upload anymore. And here are all the apps that are featured. And you can actually, there's a lot more, uh, but these are like the featured ones. So if I wanted to say, install a video player, which is already featured and I could disable it if I want. Actually, let me go to something else, featured apps, right over down here. If it says disabled, that means you have it enabled. Say if I wanted to do something like talk, this is like Zoom meeting for your uh, next cloud. You could just download and enable and you will get this feature right over here on the top right. Or if you want only office, so you can edit documents, this is the same thing, download and enable, and now you can edit documents off your next cloud. And there are so many more things you could do to this. That's why I'm so interested in using next cloud. And that's what I exclusively use between me and my friends to transfer files, especially my friend, David, where we play space engineers and he has to transfer files over to me. We use next cloud to transfer files because we don't have a storage limit and you know, video files get large. Anyway, the last thing to do after you set up everything is to, well, definitely change your passwords because I don't think you're ever going to remember those. Uh, but is to head over to your Raspberry Pi server and add in your little icon to your home or dashboard. And that's about it. Anyway, that is it. And one of the things I love about Nextcloud is because their slogan is keep your data close, which is true. You know, I'd rather be able to host this stuff in my own house on my own hard drives instead of having to pay a service like Google or iCloud or something like that to get the same amount of data or not even I could get more um, data without having to pay the ridiculous amount that they are charging because over time, if you're doing one terabyte with them for $5 a month, in one year, you could buy a one terabyte hard drive for $60. So you're basically saving yourself money if you are gonna do it yourself. Anyway, I have a couple of videos that I am coming out with the Pi Hostess series, uh, which is Jellyfin, SMB, or a Network Share, or NAS, and Proxy Manager. So you could actually host some of this stuff to the public. Now, I don't have necessarily a particular order which I want to do these things but we are starting to put more serious services into our Pi so it's about time to start hosting some of this stuff to our friends and family and I want to show you how to do certain things we could do it via VPN we could do it via uh, Ingix proxy manager or traffic we could do it by you know tons of other stuff and I don't know which video to really work on next so what I'm doing is I'm going to put a poll on my community page so you guys could vote on what the next video should be on this video series. And then we'll continue on from there because there's a lot more we got to throw into this, but we got to set up our foundations. You know, after setting up all these services, how am I going to hit the files or uh, get the files from our network share? Or how, are, how am I going to be able to share this with my friends? Like I want to be able to answer all those questions. Just don't know which order I want to put it in. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.